Arithmetic is nice, but our curly language will get a lot more interesting if we add functions and function calls to it. So let's say that functions and curly are going to be written with um, open curly brace define and then the function name with an argument in curly braces. And then after that we have a body expression for the function. For now we're just going to have functions that have a single argument. Right, just to keep things simpler, all of our functions will take only one argument. So here I'm defining double and quadruple, where quadruple uh, calls the double function. It calls the double function twice to quadruple the number. And so if I quadruple two, then I expect to get eight back as the result. So how do we add functions and function calls into our curly interpreter? Um, should we make definitions like define double to be expressions? Um, if we did that, then uh, that would allow putting a definition inside of a plus, which is not the right idea. So we don't want to just add function definitions in as uh, expressions. We're going to have to have a separate set of, of structures that we call definitions to complement the expression structures. How about function calls? Are function calls just expressions? And yes, this should make sense. If you double the number 4, then you get an 8 back that you should be able to add 1. So a function call is going to be added to our set of expressions. Um, sometimes I will say function application. Um, I will even use the shorthand app to mean function call in the expression grammar. So function call, function application, all of those mean uh, the same thing. So we have function definitions. Um, and a function definition is not an expression, but it's to, it always has a particular shape. It's always going to have define and the name and the argument name and the body. Now, we don't have to represent the curly brace define because the nature of having a definition is that there was always a curly define. So we don't have to remember that in our representation of definitions. We don't have to remember this curly brace either. But we will need to remember the function name triple. And we'll also need to remember the argument name because that changes every time. And then we'll need some way of of uh, also remembering the body, which can be arbitrarily complex. And it looks a lot like expressions. You might imagine that we have body expressions, uh, which has numbers in plus and molt, just like expressions did. The difference is when you're in the body of a function, you can also have identifiers. You can have references to the argument. And that's where I've called IDE. This strategy of defining body expression will work just fine. But it's uh, awkward that body exp and exp look so much the same, and it's not going to pay off to keep these two things separately. So even though we didn't have variables before in our expressions, it's going to be nicer to just allow uh, identifiers or variables like x to be an expression, to call this an expression, and that means a function um, has an expression for its body. What happens when you try to use a variable name and you're not inside a function? Then we'll make the interpreter produce an error. That'll turn out to be more convenient in the long run. Okay. So, without analysis, we have expressions, which are either numbers or identifiers, like x, addition or multiplication, or function call. Inside of a function call, we have a function name and an argument expression. So two pieces, but they're not both expressions. The first part always has to be the name of a function that we're going to call in this variant of curly. Those are all of our expression types. In addition, we have a function definition has a name, an argument name, and a body expression. So that leads us to these defined types. Define time exp has num e plus e multi as before, but also now has ide for identifier or variable references. Uh, and it has app e for applications or function calls with a, a symbol representing the function name and an expression representing the argument expression. Function definitions, meanwhile, have um, uh, a name, an argument, and a body expression. And we'll call the type functdefin, and fd will be the only constructor for a function definition. So putting those definitions uh, on the side here, let's look at how we represent different programs. Uh, a program can still be just an expression, like plus one, two, and we still represent that the same way, with plus e and two nummies. If we have plus x2, then we still have a plus expression. It's just that the first sub-expression is an identifier x. So we'll represent that with plus e, ide, quote x, and num e2. We can't just say ide x. We need to put the quote mark there, because we have to make sure to get a symbol. If we left off the quote mark, that would be an x reference. 
at the plate level and we didn't define a variable, a plate variable called x. So that's how we represent identity or identifier expressions inside of a plus expression. Here is a program that is just a function definition. How are we going to represent the function definition? That's using functdefin, so it'll be fd, and it's fd with quote plus 2 for the name of the function, quote x for the argument to the function, and then the body of the function, plus x2, is a plus e with an ide for x and an me for the 2. Here, what is this? This is curly brace plus 2, 9. Since this is not a plus or a times, this is a function call expression, and the function that we're calling, its name is plus 2, and its argument is 9. In this fragment of the program, we don't know what plus 2 is defined to, but we can still parse it as an expression, and we can still represent it using epi with the name plus 2 and the argument expression 9. Here's a complete program that has two function definitions and finally expression. So we've been looking at just expressions or just definitions, but when we have a whole program in Curly, we need to put the definitions together with the expressions. So the way we'll represent all of this is with two parts. We will keep a list of function definitions. So imagine that in Curly all the definitions come first, and then a single expression that you can think of as the main expression to run. So we're going to represent our list of definitions as just a list of func defs. Um, and, uh, for example, quadruple here of x applies double to x and then double to the result of that. So that's why we have a function definition quadruple whose argument name is x. We have applying double to x and then applying double to that result. Finally, our main program was quadruple 2, so the main expression down here is quadruple applied to nummy 2.